You know, Bob, this is when I usually start my Christmas shopping. Oh, really? What are you looking for? You know, I'm not really sure. I don't know what I want. Three words for you. Treat. Yoke. Sell. Clothes. Treat yourself. Fragrances. Treat yourself. Massages. Treat yourself. Mimosas. Treat yourself. Fine leather goods. Treat yourself. The following podcast contains graphic descriptions of international celebrating and global merrymaking. It may not be suitable for angry or unhappy audience members. Listener discretion is advised. You've been warned. Have you ever seen any of those foreign films? I don't like them. Some are born great, others achieve greatness, and some watch Christmas movies. Both festive, aren't they? And we are the festive foreign film fans. We howdy, Mark. You're nobody till somebody loves you. (laughs) You're nobody till somebody cares. Oh, sorry. Mark, are you going to be singing all all episode? You know, m- maybe. I mean, this movie inspired my heart. <laughs> Filled you with love? And confusion. <laughs> and confusion. Well, Mark, it is springtime. Love it. And you know, a young man's heart turns to, to fancy, turns to love. So, so what does that mean for us? <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering the same thing. <laughs> Our hearts turn to uh, maybe a good night's sleep. (laughs) We got Mother's Day coming up here. I feel like I I hit this topic every time, every show, and you should come over and just bonk me on the head because I'm (laughs) like, what is he? He's bringing up again life and times (laughs) passing and all that. No, but I was just like, I think about, okay, my kids, when they were small and all the stuff they used to you know, glue the macaroni on the plate and give it to Mary (laughs) or make (laughs) one of those bracelets for or whatever. And I'm like, would I want to go back and redo those times? Would I want to? Would I want to raise my kids again? And it's a, you know, people might say, well, you're, hey, you're young again, yeah. you know. But I'm like, if I did go back, would I change things? Would right. things be different? I mean, do you think about that? I do, I do. I, I, I often and so wait it's not appropriate for macaroni jewelry anymore (laughs) oh does that mean we got to go out shopping after this (laughs) but yeah i I do think about it and i see how younger parents are raising children what they're doing not doing how they're and and you're a little bit like wow like in some ways the access to information is so much more than it used to be today so could i go back and maybe do things differently sure but I ultimately come at and say, you know what? I'm pretty happy where I am right now. I don't want to go back and try to do things so I have different outcomes because I'm happy where I'm at right now. Yeah. And all the all the the things I did right, all the things I did wrong, sort of brought me to this place. But I do think about it. Well, you know, and, and what you just said kind of jolted me because I've been kind of thinking of more uh, sentimental thinking of the times as they were. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. Things today are much, much different. And I know... I don't want to be the old man on the porch, kids mm-hmm. get off my lawn. I know a lot of that access to information, that technology, there's so many beautiful things with it, but there's a lot of things that we all talk about. Like, can you imagine if everything we did was captured on film like oh, it is today? Right. I, I actually don't know if I'd want to be raising a kid right now. You know what I mean? True. And I, I'm glad that our kids grew up in a different time and they're much more familiar and probably better suited to for this constant change versus how we are so good for them oh you know what i think is is really good is don't delude yourself i see these memes that i saw one recently and it was a picture of fred flintstone's house and said if you know what this is your childhood rocked and i'm like okay our childhood You know, everybody looks back on it in rose-colored glasses, but I can't tell you, in my high school, there were maybe four or five moms that had nervous breakdowns because 
the times were changing yeah. and people, women were going out to work and they'd never worked and not everything was, you know, it wasn't perfect. Wine and roses, right? No, it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. Uh, <laughs> but I hear you, but moms are the best. Moms are. Moms are the best. And we're dedicating this one to the moms. And so since we're talking about love, yeah. tonight's movie, it's All Is Love. That's the name of the movie, but it's Els, Els is Lufta. Els is Lufta. It's a 2007 film. Now, Mark, once again, what is amazing to me as we've gone through this is we see, and I, I think there needs to be a category of films inspired by Love Actually. <laughs> I mean, it, clearly this film was, and you know, I'm sure the people around it may deny and say, no, right. we never, we didn't even see Love Actually until this came out, whatever. It starts out with a the voiceover, just like Love Actually. It has the intersecting storylines. It has a bunch of them going on. The one thing I will give it credit for, and I don't know if you noticed, they do a great job of, even when it's focused on one of the other people you might see someone from the other story like walk in the background or be on know, tv yeah. or which yeah. i'm like well that's cool i mean they're all constantly in the the scenes i would enjoy this movie and like it a lot more if certain elements were not part of the film and right. that is and i know this is a is a real controversial topic and i'll tell you i spent a lot of time in amsterdam mm -hmm. and you know i recognized places, the airport, all the bikes, all the things that I remember that I enjoyed about Amsterdam are in this film. But they also feature, and it's a central feature, Black Pete or Zweit Pete, which for those of our listeners who aren't aware, in the Netherlands, what they believe is St. Nicholas lives in Spain mm -hmm. and he has six or eight Black associates and he comes on saint nicholas day he comes to the netherlands on a boat with these characters and you know then he they pass out the gifts and mm -hmm. that there's some discussion you know i've understood that black pete brings the candy for the kids but then i also have heard and it's referred to in this movie that he's the one that punishes right the naughty kids but he you know has afro type mm -hmm. hair big red lips and he's, it's a blackface. It's right. done in blackface. And in this movie, I actually saw even more offensive things, like when they make him skip and they do, they do some things that almost strikingly remind you of a minstrel show. That's right. Dutch people will say, well, his face is black now. They tried to say it's from the soot from the, the uh, chimneys in that. But clearly it's a caricature. And I think now, now this movie was in, 2007, so it's 15 years ago. And I think really from probably 2018-ish on, it got, I mean, they took a lot of criticism. So I think it's somewhat downplayed. Right. Now they may say this is cultural and this is what we, you know, this has been mm -hmm. tradition or whatever, but I don't know, it's pretty offensive. All right, let's talk about our yeah. actors. Yep. So the first you talked about Jan, he is Michelle, Roman, Roman. He's an actor and writer. And in this is Mark. I'm always amazed by these, the these actors who had like other careers. He was a graphic artist, and now and here he's starring in this movie and and really does a great job. He co-founded a club, Mazo Mazo, which was an entertainment venue in the 1980s, known for its audiovisual presentations. He gained fame on a sketch comedy show called Jessica. Jisafit, and went on to appear in many movies, none of them English speaking. So Jan is, as you indicated, he is our St. Nicholas character. Yeah. And I would say he is our reluctant St. Nicholas character. Very reluctant. <laughs> Very. And then we have Kiki, Kiki Jalama. She is played by Carice Van Houten. Carice is a Dutch actress and singer, uh, probably best known for her role as Melisandra or the Red Witch in Game of Thrones. Remember her? The Red Witch. And you know, when I do, that's incredible. It is. And it, she, would she, when you see her in this movie and she's striking in her beautiful blue eyes and all that, I would not have associated her with that character, the Red Witch, at all. Even though once you read that, you're like, okay, I can see it. But 
she's she's stunning in this movie and, and not in Game of Thrones. That's right. <laughs> Clearly, you know, Game of Thrones was English speaking. She's been in other uh, English speaking films. She played opposite to Tom Cruise and Valkyrie. And then she was in Repo Man, Black Death and Brimstone. And then the other character, and like I said, we could go 12 characters here, yeah. and they all are very principal. Mm-hmm. We're kind of hitting on like the two here are the love interest, the main right. love interest. Right. And this is uh, Joran Spitzbergen, and he plays the prince, Prince Valentin. Valentin. And I think a lot of Americans forget that the Netherlands has a royal family. That's you right. know, Although he seems to, at least if it's true to this movie, it's out and about around people and I didn't see any security no, staff following exactly, him. Yeah. <laughs> see, I'd say he's maybe even a little, little bit of a reluctant prince too. Yes, like the, yes, the yeah. royalty banner over his head, I think can frustrate him at times. Yeah, yeah. And when he can't hang out with his boys. <laughs> yeah, there's that There's that group too. <laughs> so Joran, he was a stage and screen actor, appeared in more than 40 films since 1992, none of them English speaking. Uh, he did a, appear in a supporting role in an Oscar nominated film called Twin Sisters. It was an international hit and it was a favorite with critics. And his most recent work was Mr. Frog, based on a famous children's book about a teacher who can change into a frog. Now, I haven't seen this and seen him play the prince. Don't you want to see Mr. Frog? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. I think he might, be, it might be, he might be typecast in a certain role. Either you're the frog or you're the prince. Okay. So I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. It's, it's fairly convoluted and I'll hit the high notes, but go through it as best I can. We open up, like I said, there's a voiceover kind of comparing the belief in St. Nicholas with the belief in love that you have to, it's like you have to have it on faith that, yep. you know, so that's good. A hitchhiker coming from Spain gets in the truck and it's our Jan and he's he's coming to, Sp- uh, to uh, the Netherlands. It's getting close to St. Nicholas Day. So they actually have this presentation. It's on TV, which is amazing when the boat comes and St. Nicholas comes. So it's an event and they're showing everyone getting prepped and all that. And there is a, a stage actor who famously has played St. Nicholas and indicated it's his favorite role <laughs> and he loves to do it. And he's a bit of a prima donna. And and again, this is in the first 10 minutes or so of the of the film. We see him at home with his daughter and they have a little fight and her last words to her father <laughs> before <laughs> uh, he abruptly dies is, you're a prick. <laughs> but that's it. He dies. He yeah. has a massive heart attack because he's screaming at them about something about his costume. or <laughs> His costume, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. And so has a heart attack. They are, they're ready to leave. I mean, the kids are there. They talk about 100,000 people or something. They, they say they're all lined up, all waiting for this in <laughs> St. Nicholas is dropped dead. I mean, it looked fun, right? It looked like that would be a fun event. Yeah. So the dr- truck driver was going to this event. And so Jan gets dropped off and he sees some of the food and coffee there. <laughs> He's getting some. St. Nicholas drops dead. They look at him. He has a beard. He's kind of big guy. And they ask him to to be saint nicholas and he does not want to be saint mm-hmm. nicholas mm-hmm. he is in fact he's kind of brusque i wouldn't say he's he's overly friendly or no. anything but they do convince him because hey they're desperate they need saint nicholas so and it's funny his only request is i'm not going to get on the horse because saint right. nicholas rides a white horse also in the netherlands and he's like i'm not riding a horse so and all the black peats are there they're all on the boat Boat comes, comes in, and even the black pizza complained to him, hey, the other guy would wave and That's smile right. at the kids. He's standing there. He's not doing anything and all that. Well, a girl, a young girl gets pushed into the water accidentally, and you know she's in this water. No one's doing anything, and Jan dives in the water, dressed as St. Nicholas, and saves her and pulls her out of the water. The funny thing is, is you think, here's this great moment, and he's to walk down this this whole avenue of all the kids lined up and yelling and he's just done this heroic act and he takes 
off running. He wants nothing to do with this at all. Because he's done this, he's now become a media sensation. And they're like, wait, where did he go? We want this guy. We want to find this guy. So the other thing that happens in this, there's a parade. And I mean, it's a big event. And there's a woman who is in the parade. And you see, there's a lot of characters. She's dressed as a giant present. She is leading this carriage with the horses on it. And the prince, who we find out is kind of a bit, it reminds me of Prince Harry, a bit of a playboy. You know, all his love interests have been splashed all over the news. Well, he has come home for the holiday and he's there in the parade and her horses just go over to the prince. So, and she can't control them and she's dressed like a giant gift (laughs) and he helps her out and he looks at her and they stare at each other, a little, you know, love interest there. And, but she's dressed as a gift and he says her name and she's like, well, how do you know my name? And it's just because she has a a gift tag on her that says her name, but uh, that sets off, you know, a series of events where our prince is determined to find her. She though is not determined to be with the prince. I mean, she knows that he's right. been in the, he seems to pick up women and yeah, but very love much a, them and leave them. Very and, much a playboy. You know, you, you, you see that in the movie he runs with sort of a group of guys who oh, are, yeah. uh, you, you would say are not respectful towards women, you know, who are there to eat, drink and party and, and do really basically do whatever they want. Yeah. So there were, there were like three elements of this movie that, Otherwise, I could very much enjoy it. There was the Black Pete element. These guys were so abusive to people. And, you know, where he throws up and then they're like making the maid clean it up and stepping over. And then there's one where they make a really crude Jewish Yes, uh, they and, right. and, yeah. and again, played for laughs. But anyway, yeah. so so the prince now wants to find her. She works at a counter in a department store and she wants nothing to do with him. So he decides that what he's going to do is they need a black Pete to entertain during the shopping day. So he applies <laughs> for that role and he is pretty good at it. He yeah. can do all the tricks that they want him to do. And so he's performing while she's working. We have uh, we have a couple that is divorced because the husband had an affair with his son's school teacher. And there is the issues between the two of them, you know, yeah. the fallout from the divorce right. and dealing with it. And at the holidays and the son is, is confused and he still believes in St. Nicholas and they want to keep him believing right. in St. Nicholas. We have another couple who the husband has gotten fired, but he doesn't want his wife to know. So he's going, he takes a job at a bar and he, so he's coming home late. He's staying out and his wife thinks that he is having an affair. We have the brother of the woman who works in the department store who's falling for the prince. He and his partner, they are a gay couple and they want to get married. And clearly, I wouldn't say his partner has misgivings. He's he's going through some issues. He right. is an undertaker yeah. and he's crying when he's <laughs> presenting the things. He's clearly emotional and yeah. and and he's they're supposed to be their marriage going on. And so the main two storylines I think are the prince and the and the woman he's interested in and Jan. And Jan is probably the one that that drives the narrative forward. And it's interesting because they keep want, pulling him back because they need him because he just, you know, at first he saves a girl and that makes him, you know, media fixture. And then they start to bring him on t- shows and hey, right. and he is like, I'm not St. Nicholas <laughs> and call me Jan. And everyone thinks that's hilarious. It's like, yeah, it's St. Jan. And and then he says things like there is uh, an African-American I think entertainer or celebrity right. on a show. And he's right. like, Oh, these are the slaves of, of Santa Saint Claus. Nicholas. Yeah. yeah. These are his slave. And the guy's like offended, but everybody else is like, thinks it's, it's funny and uproarious, you know? And he keeps doing things that I think they're taken That's aback right. by him, but they, but they really like him because he's so different from what you would expect. He's very reluctant. But what we soon come to learn is that he had left his wife and he, he was kind of coming, I think, to to make up with her because right. he's been gone for years. And he finds out that she's died. Yeah. And that 
makes a change in him. So then he starts uh, kind of professing some philosophy like, you know, do things that make you happy, do things that you love. So we see a little uh, a little change. While that is going on with Jan, the prince and the, and the woman at the counter, he is kind of flirting with her. Right. And you, and you think that she can't tell that it's the prince. Right. And so finally, everyone's telling her, you really need to be with someone. You're lonely. You're unhappy. Even if, you know, you're waiting for a prince to come in on a white horse, that's not going to happen. Just find someone and spend time with them, right? Right. So she goes home with the prince. And the funniest thing is he's in his <laughs> black beat co- costume. They're, you know, making out. They sleep together. Then he gets up and s- is sneaking out of her apartment and her she has black all Perfect. over the black makeup all over her yep. face which is hilarious and then she sees that he's trying to sneak away and again she follows him you know like he's climbing over roofs That's and down right. gutters and she's doing the same thing which is funny confronts him well, and I, again, I think her view on on relationships is, is that there, there isn't any noble people left right so like she's gonna hold him accountable for trying to sneak out and so the determined look on her face. Oh, yeah. it, it's great. It's yeah. great. And I love the confrontation. And and what is, is still is interesting is you're like, half the black face is gone. Like, can't you tell this is yeah. a print? But she prints, but she doesn't say that. She's just confronting him. Right. It turns out she knew all along. Yes, that's the thing. That's when she said it. She knew all along right. that it was a print. The whole time when he was performing in the... Yep. So, and that's great. And then they set a date for the next night. And the next night, she's getting all ready, making her place look presentable for him. And he's preparing to go. And then his buddies show up and they drag him out. And he ends up drinking with them and blows her off. And it's it's fueling her view Right. Of, you know, what she wants is she can't find and it's not, maybe it's not obtainable. So the next day he buys flowers and he's trying to, so he's going to apologize to her. And she's totally acts like, oh, did, did we have a date? I know. Were we supposed to get together? So she's not going to have her feelings bruised, you know, so she's going to act really tough. And so then he doesn't, she says, who are the flowers for? Oh, there! I'm leaving for him here victim. for the victim. <laughs> so we'll never forget. Yeah, so we'll never. Yes, exactly. So again, it's your classic misunderstandings, lack of communication. So then, this is all culminating on Saint Nicholas Day, which in the Netherlands is pretty much it's their Christmas. That's, That's right. their big day. So what happens is oh, yeah. Saint Nicholas who dies. Yeah. They're having the the funeral for him at the same time as there's another funeral going on. Yep. And his daughter gets up, the one who <laughs> called him a prick, gets up and she's talking about it. And like yeah. she keeps a, a St. Nicholas theme because it was her father's favorite part and all that. Yeah. And she goes over to drop, and I think they must be the ginger nuts into the, the nuts, yeah. yeah, into the coffin. And she's like, that's not him. <laughs> I mean, I, I had a chuckle at it. I mean, but I've never seen <laughs> yeah. the person be in the wrong casket during, you know, the, the, the actual event. So. so I will try to tie up a few of these loose ends yeah. and we'll talk about the other things. But the one interesting thing that you have to, because you're right, there's so many subplots and yeah. I encourage people to, to seek this out if they want to, if they can deal with some of the, yeah. the negative things. But the other funeral, there's a young man there oh. who we've seen <laughs> earlier. And the daughter of the man who died, she, they kind of have a, again, love interest <laughs> connection there. She ends up, she is the, the woman whose husband had had the affair with the teacher. Yeah. So she sleeps with this guy who ends up the next morning, he's playing video games. <laughs> okay. You can't really tell how old he was. He says at one point, she asks him, and he says he's 16. Now, I thought he was joking, but then when she goes to his place, he lives at home, and there is his mom, and his mom's there, and obviously upset that she's there. Yeah. She goes up in his bedroom, is confronting him, and he's like, I'm in love with you. They've you know been together like two days or That's whatever, right. and she's like, you're not in love with me. So- Maybe he was 16. What this does do, though, is it actually kind of 
puts her back with her husband. She, they, they kind of go back together. She goes, she comes back to see her son that he, she finds him weeping over their, uh, watching, watching their wedding mm -hmm. video. And so they kind of seem to go back together. The prince ultimately shows up on her doorstep on a white horse. So yeah. he's the prince on a white horse and Jan. So he's supposed to appear on this show and, and it seemed like a big splashy and they're going to make some wisecracks and all that. And he just says, no, I'm not doing that. And then ultimately he ends up at the home of the couple of the woman who thinks that her husband's having an affair and all the kids, the daughter calls the daughter that he saved from the water calls all her friends and all the kids show up there and he's talking about yeah. syndicate and it, it's a whole different side of him that we haven't seen oh there's reports coming in he's supposed to be on the show and the reporters are like where is what happened to him right. and then these calls are coming in the kids all over amsterdam are disappearing they don't know where they are ultimately she finds jan the reporter she starts to interview him and he talks about how he lost his wife. And, you know, it's funny. The kids are all sitting around. And they're like, oh, Santa's married. And Santa has, <laughs> Santa has a kid. Yeah, because he, he said how he abandoned his son. And he and she's like, what's the son's name? And he says the son's name on TV. And it's the individual who he was sitting next to who was supposed to get married and yeah. was having, had lost his mom, the undertaker, having all the misgivings and all of these emotional pieces fall into place and in the end they get and they meet each other and yeah. and i think i'm gonna leave it there I, I think it's a like i said it's it's and we can get into our 4f yeah. test is it festive absolutely not what's interesting is it's christmas but it's not christmas because it's saint nicholas day right. but it's their christmas and it's very i think when all this miracle and everyone's stories are resolving themselves it's snowing it's right. like heavily snowing on all of them which is yeah. great it's a great festive touch yes it's festive how did it make me feel though and and i think i told you i you know watched this twice and picked up more and i i don't know i think one i think you're right if they'd made it Today, I don't, it would probably be a lot different. Right. I don't know if I can get past the, some of the things in it. I, I you know. Well, like you said, when, when a few things are mentioned, like when he talks and says about uh, Black Pete in the, on the show and he's like, they're Santa slaves. Like I was hoping at that point, people would have went like a step back, like, oh, right. Right. And so I'm with you, Bob. Totally festive like hearted Christmas stuff, like outside of some of these roles. And I'll even go back to that gang of, of guys that yeah. Prince was with. like the other thing that they did that was just all of it outraged me, but this is when they picked up the car and threw it in oh, the canal. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah. said, well, we have immunity, right? Cause they're the Royals. Yes. Yep. Yep. At the time, would I've had the sensitivity that I have today? I don't know. Like to be fair to the filmmakers in the year they did that like yeah i i grapple with it too but i i would not recommend this film in current condition without a, like a bunch of like hey when you watch this, this is not current in a many of the many of the cultural beliefs that people would have today yeah and in fact what i say is in the second watching it bothered me more because I think the first you're caught up in the storylines yeah. and sorting everyone i am going to tell you though Yes. How to say Merry Christmas in Dutch. I think I'm going to say. I'm, gonna, I'm wondering, gonna, have you ever said Merry Christmas in Dutch when you were traveling there? Like we were there during the Christmas holidays? No. Um, and I was there. It was like right early, like okay. around St. Nicholas Day. Okay. And I, I, I never did only because, I mean, all of the Dutch people that I met spoke English very well. Oh, okay. What was interesting is they would speak English to me, but Dutch to each other. So the Dutch translation for Merry Christmas is Vrolak Kerfurst. Kerst first. Vrolak Kerst first. Vrolak Kerstfus. Kerstfus. Mark, you, uh, it's that, I know it's in your family that, that won't, you have a yeah, cousin. cousin. <laughs> it's you, you always say them better than me. <laughs> That's why you get all the tough films. But so the word Vrolak literally means cheerful. So really what you're saying is cheerful Christmas. It's really like you're, you're wishing someone, Hey, have a celebratory remembrance of Christ's birth. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's talk about some of the customs in the Netherlands. And and one of these I will I can tell you that I did take part in. Now, on Christmas Day and Christmas, you may not give gifts because typically the gifts are given, like we saw in the movie, on St. Nicholas Day. Right. In fact, I think there was one interesting scene, if you recall, they left a uh, a big bag of gifts. The father yeah. <laughs> leaves the gate and then climbs in the window and then comes in, which was great. I thought that it was, was really smart. That was adorable. <laughs> yeah. So if they do give gifts on St. Nicholas, there'll probably either be no gifts on Christmas Day or maybe a small token to acknowledge Christmas. And that sometimes they say, you know, Christmas, St. Nicholas Day is big when the kids are small. When they get older, it, it kind of moves to Christmas Day. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So then... This is k- kind of a relatively new custom, and I would say it's not embraced by everybody. And this is this, the, it became popular in the 80s uh, and 90s, and it's called gourmetin. And basically, it's you're, you have a tabletop grill, uh-huh. and you kind of, it, it reminds me of fondue, only you're grilling. You have little pieces of food and you know, meats and that, and everybody is cooking over the little grill, and some of them, they We'll do a pizza one, mm. or they do uh, one like a, it's like a hot pot, small pieces of meat, vegetables, and all that. What the reason why it's some people don't like it because your house smells like the oh, I didn't even grilling, oh, yeah, right. And um, some people are like, you don't, it's not a good meal. You don't, you end up eating very little, it's just little pieces of things. But it's a very social, you know. You have right. sauces and that, and that can make it fun. So some people really like it. Others do not, but it's fairly common. This one is a is a really great custom, and it's this is just in a in one area in the Netherlands. But there's a cemetery, and it has the graves of thirteen about of four, about fourteen hundred Canadian soldiers who died yeah. while liberating the Netherlands from the Nazis. This is to this day. Every Christmas Eve, they go and they light, and you can see pictures, oh and it's beautiful. Gosh. They light candles on all the graves of these Canadian soldiers. Oh and looking at this and learning about it, you see people talk about, oh, I remember as a child, and we all went out, and we oh did it. And gosh. it's really, it's like become part of their custom for Christmas. Oh, we go out to the cemetery, and we remember these soldiers who say, and I'm like, that's phenomenal. That's beautiful. I, you know, you know I know that story. I mean, I know of that happened right at the end of the war. I think it was like in 1945. Like I think the war war was ended in a lot of different locations when that when that invasion occurred and they freed the, the Netherlands. Oh. So it's sort of the the tragedy of the deaths, but it's also the tragedy of right and, t- and communication getting across all the places where fighting was occurred. Hey, that the war is over. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Now I'm going to move into one that's <laughs> not so beautiful. This is really funny. <laughs> so there is a song. They have a Christmas song, a Dutch Christmas song, and it's called Flappy. Flappy. And it's from, that sounds happy. Flappy. Yeah, and it's from 1978, but it still is played a lot. And the reason is, so the song is about a boy who discovers that his pet rabbit is gone on Christmas morning. And he says, Mom, I can't find Flappy. Where's Flappy? And his mom tells him, oh, just uh, just go out and play and don't worry about it. And we're going to have our Christmas dinner. <laughs> and so, oh, no. so he, it turns out that the dad has killed Flappy and serves it to his family for dinner. So then the next day, the mother comes to the boy <laughs> and says, Dad is gone. Oh, Where's Dad? And the, and the mom is like, "Hey, mom, don't worry about it. You just go out and play, and we're gonna have something good for dinner." <laughs> Which turns oh. out to be Dad. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Flappy, Flappy. And then, and this is so Dutch. <laughs> you know, I had to include this thing, this little item, because it just reminds me, you know, because this, the Dutch can be fairly liberal on certain yeah. things, you know, they have the red light district right. and that. So <laughs> there <clears throat> is a statue of Santa Claus in Rotterdam, <laughs> Netherlands, holding a butt plug. <laughs> now, it's officially described that Santa Claus is holding a Christmas tree in his hands, but the artist has said, well, but it also could be a butt plug. 
<laughs> and he he says, I'm trying to make a statement about the consumer c- community and material consumption. And I don't n- exactly know how the two go together. All I know is it's commonly referred to as the butt plug gnome. I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we literally went from... The most gorgeous, beautiful remembrance of self, of of being liberated to flappy and cannibalism, and cannibalism <laughs> to a butt plug. Yeah, I I I think you know what? It's your Bob. It's your call. But I think we should talk about the music. <laughs> Welcome to the Netherlands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so should we listen to some music? Let's do it. This calls for some Christmas music. Yes, this Christmas music. What kind of Christmas music is that? The least you could do is play some Christmas music. Now back to Christmas music. So like I said, Mark, we didn't do the Dead Rabbit song. But instead, what we did, this song is similar to, you know, like Band-Aid and We Are the World. Well, the Dutch did one. They did a song in um, 2019 and it was called Ik Ben Es Kirstball. Hmm. I, mean, I am a Christmas ball. I am like, I am a Christmas ornament. They right. say Christmas ball, but it's Christmas ornament. And all of the proceeds raised from the single, from the song, mm-hmm. were donated to the Princess Maxima Center for Pediatric Oncology. Oh. So it's raising money for, to, for fight childhood cancer. That's, again, what a beautiful thing. And the, the, the other reason why I picked this is the woman who organized it like who was the bob geldof or the Mm -hmm. michael jackson in this the organizer she was in the film she was sarah in the film and her name is Chantel jansen and she got 30 dutch uh, celebrities to participate i love it but let's hear the song So you can hear all the different voices. Yeah. And what's great is in the video, they're like ornaments. <laughs> Their faces like oh are like spread in the ornaments and they're singing. But the other funny thing about this song. The first time this song ever was sung, it was sung by Ernie and Bert on the Dutch Sesame Street in 2008. So this is an Ernie and Bert, it's a Sesame Street song. Love it. And it says, and some of the uh, lyrics are like, life is like a Christmas tree and the balls you hang on it are your friends. They make your tree more beautiful and they give it that extra shine especially on difficult days. That is a, that's, that could be our quote. That, exactly. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so quickly, I just, yeah. I know we keep harping on this, but it's interesting because I started to filter it through our, an American perspective. So we talk about Black Pete and the controversy around him. Yeah. And then I was like, well, you know, what if you had a Christmas custom that people did every year and then, you know, as a kid, you did it. And then as you got, as an adult, you realize, oh, that's kind of offensive or inappropriate. People would say, well, there's no bad intent. It's tradition. What is that defensible? And, yeah. and, I, and I was trying to think of if there's anything similar here in the States. And I came up with two examples. One, obviously, we all know this, the, you know, controversy around baby, it's cold outside and some radio stations won't play it because- right. Is she getting roofied or not? Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Right. But the other one is even a more interesting one because, you know, we think this movie, Christmas Story, gets played. Heck, there's a marathon that where they'll yeah. show it a number of times. But there is a scene at the end of the movie when they're at the Chinese restaurant and it's played for comedy and how they sing when they're singing and, and they're, they're kind of stereotypical, the Chinese, the waiters and how they speak. And it's funny. And I don't know. Is that? Yeah, I mean, when you know, they sing Deck the Halls, yeah. I, I mean, it's, I mean, that's, I mean, there's movies, certainly, right? Even the movie Holiday Inn, right? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and that's, I love Holiday Inn. So do I. I love it. And, and I try to, in my head, write it off like, oh, 
But look at what they're doing. They're talking about Lincoln and freeing yeah. the slaves and all that. But I mean, with, when she's at picking any, you know, yeah. with her braids and all that, and how they actually kind of treat Mam, uh, Mammy, Mammy, yeah. Mammy in the you know. just even her name, Mammy, yeah, right. Yeah. But yeah, well, but, what about the whole Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays debate? Like, yeah, it does not offend me at all if someone says Happy Holidays. In fact, I don't think it's it's you know you're not you're not taking a knock at Christmas no. or anything. We, not everyone celebrates Christmas, so right. I'd rather, because I know a lot of people have other holidays around the same time, and I want to express that same joy to all of them. Exactly. I mean, I, I tell, I say to people, Merry Christmas, yeah. right? And if somebody says Happy Holiday to me, I say, thank you, right? Yeah. And yeah. I might say Happy Holiday, but I always, if I'm initiating it, I say Merry Christmas, but if I'm receiving it, I don't care what they say. If they have a smile on their face and they're trying to express some warmth, I'm going to take it and I'm going to, I'm going to love it. But yeah, I can't really think of any other, your, your example of a Christmas story is a good one because again, when we first saw it, maybe for the first 50 times, you laugh, right? Oh yeah, you absolutely. Know, but if I'm an Asian American and I hear that, am I laughing? Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, yeah. that's, that's a tough one. And like you said, I, you, you've grown, we're more sensitive to it now. What I will tell you though, if I go into a Starbucks and they have one of those red cups, I'm throwing it back at the guy in, in, in his face, the barista, and I'm walking out. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Mark, I am going to leave you with this: the spirit of Christmas illuminates the picture, the picture window of the soul, and we look out upon the world's busy life and become more interested in people than things. Perfect. <laughs> you know, what you should say at the end of that, but plug gnome. <laughs> <laughs> no hey if you like listen to spread the word about us you know uh visit our facebook uh, page or festafans at gmail um, you can put it you know the line feedback favorite movies favorite use of butt plug whatever whatever it is but we'd like we'd love to hear from you mark it is always fun <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We're done. Actually, we're done. Done, done. It's over. Over, over. It's over. It's over. Kaput. Finito. It's over. It's over. It's over. This has been a Waysound Studio production. And sound engineering on our show is by Jake Fontana. 